Welcome to Jollof Agenda on Radio Now 95.3. I am Coyote Ladeni, standing in for ZB. Today, my guest is someone I find it very difficult on how best to describe him. He is a music and voiceover artist, a movie director, and probably better known as an actor. Welcome, Shebni Anrizi. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Yes, you know, yes, probably yes, I may just quickly make uh, bring up this more like a caveat. Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to assume that I don't know you, and because of um, the current generation, we probably might be disconnected with some of so wonderful things you've done in the past. So wow. part of me that I may be asking you a question that you think that uh, you mean you don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm talking about the the disconnect between the, the generation now and the generation before before now i i think there's a need for us to bridge that gap because it's becoming very very embarrassing that a lot of them do not go back to go and check things read up thing. i think the reading culture is gradually dying off and we, we're not trying to get them to find out about the history of the past because you need the past to help you for the present and project into the future so uh, it's 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 a welcome development if exactly. you're going to do it that way so I, let, let's start with uh, what you might also have heard several times mm. the name shegun and mm. a mixed <clears throat> name of yoruba and Igbo. and somebody has asked what exactly where is he from you know shegun and rize that is he an Igbo man but we've seen him act Yoruba movie. We've seen him act I, English movie. We've seen him act I, with I, some I, of these English movies I, 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 that I, are I, usually <laughs> associated with uh, Igbo actors. Uh, so who is Shegun <laughs> Funnily, funnily enough, I had the same kind of conversation with the DP of uh, Barracks Police Station yesterday. I paid him a courtesy visit. And, uh, it's important you clear that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, people keep asking, okay, the DC is here. I'm the DP of <laughs> So, well, the, the thing is that in 1992, I was going to record my first album, my sophomore album, and um, on the premier music. And Dindisi had just signed me alongside Tony M- Minis. Dindisi was actually the creative head. And uh, Tony Minis was uh, uh, the MD. So, um, they felt that if they had put a, an artist on the shelf called Sheguaino, it would have sounded like a Fuji artist. And so, he asked if I had other names. And so, I gave him... <clears throat> a few of my names and he said uh okay we'll okay we'll think about it and uh, this happened on uh, tuesday i remember and um during the weekends you know we, we used to stay up to early morning to go rush by the newspaper we used to read the vanguard punch sketch tribune all of them the entertainment pages and um, we had the likes of alex o Edmund yeah. Spice, uh emphasis blackie was rave zubia debeli we on that label at that time. We just Zubia had just won the Lucky Sun Splash, so it was being worked on to release his album. And then I'd written uh, the theme song for the Nigerian Music Awards for Tony Okoroji, and I was also stage manager for for the event. And then later on, became artistic director for the Nigerian Music Awards. Those days it used to be the big thing. So you know, I just picked up the paper, paper weekend, and I just saw my picture that Philip Terminal had taken, and I just saw Premier Music signs on new artist Shaguarins. I said, "What the." <laughs> is that I couldn't wait for Monday morning I was living in the Kurudu then but working in Tafabelua here funnily Tafabelua oh, and then we moved from Tafabelua here to Tafabelua Crescent in Sulere Tafabelua on the island the square and then we moved to Tafabelua Crescent and I dashed that morning went to Satellite Town all the way I said oh God, what is this he was just calm cool collected he just said leave it just leave it to work and that's how the journey of uh, the metamorphosis from Shegua, you know, to Shegua Rinze started. That even my late father joined in calling me Shegua Rinze at the end of the day. Wow. So it's, it is that I am, my mother is Igbo, my father is Yoruba from Badagri. And of course, um, just the way the father will give a child a name, the mother also will say, okay, let me. And so that's how. So I'm, I'm working right now as an artist without my surname, but every other valid document of mine reads Shegu. I read the Chukwa in Opa no complete. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I think that she actually explained it clearly. And a lot of people will even feel this is the time we even need the interpretation of that name where people should feel, you know, that sense of oneness, that sense of... Oh, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, incidentally, I speak the three main languages, Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, so it works for me. It works for me. And um, 
you see, it's also page of pocket too, as a voiceover artist. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about paying pocket, but maybe in English and pigeon. But I, I, I don't do the languages when it comes to do. I, 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 I just do the pure English. But I allow, not as if I cannot do it, but just allow people just, uh, just do it. But it, it, it does have its benefits. You get to make inroads, meet people, and and all that. So I. I also use that platform to preach peace because that's the most important thing at, at this point in time, at the turning point in our country right now that everybody seems to be sitting on the edge like we're sitting on a keg of gunpowder and I keep saying, let's not keep talking like that. I think it's time for us to just focus and move the country forward. We are indivisible. Okay. There's no way we can break this country. We are too, we're far gone. We're just far too gone. Well, the oneness is just that you find houses marrying Igbos or Yoruba, you find your bass marrying you know, vice versa. So, Let's, let's, okay, let's start with uh, that statement you made. And uh, like I introduced you as a music artist, uh, some people may not have that privilege of even knowing that uh, you started off even as a music artist uh, and lovely music. I still remember those lovely songs. And uh, people would say, probably Shagun wasn't very successful with music. How true is that? <laughs> oh, why did you leave it? Why are we not sing some of your songs? Uh, okay, uh, let, let's put it away. Uh, partially, they might be right. And partially they're wrong. I think what had happened was that as it, when we're playing music, it wasn't as as profitable as it is right now. It's lucrative. It's not lucrative. It wasn't as lucrative. That's the word to use. Thanks for that. Um, that it was just a, a bit. It was just too much of a struggle trying to balance the act of being a recording artist, performing live, and getting people to music. It, it, so it was a closeout. Music in our time was a closeout. Not like now that it's open. And you can you have all various platforms where you can go and get music and download and all that. And of course, with the advent of, 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 of uh, social media and all that and the internet, so it's made it broad spectrum right now. In our time, we're, just, we're, we're, we're sort of cocooned, if you know what I mean. So it didn't go beyond the, the record itself and the cassette. And of course, you had the pirates. Did also. a bit of challenge with distribution. And bit of cha- not bit of challenge. It was a major challenge having distribution. Now, let me give you an example. My first album when it came out, they released five thousand copies. Now let's go back to nineteen ninety two. How many? How many were we in the core? Was the population of the country? You released five thousand. So hmm. that also gave room. And I wasn't the only artist. So they were releasing them in bits, 5,000, 5,000. If you sell, they were selling the records, they were selling the cassettes. And it got to a point in time, if, if you could not satisfy the yearnings of the market, then the pirates would come in and bridge it, bridge it for you illegally. And they were making, ripping you off. So those are the things that really affected them. And then I all, one other thing that really, really put me off was that I wasn't allowed to express myself musically the way I wanted to express myself, the kind of music I wanted to do. I was being pushed into a corner and say, this is what we want you to do. I think because at that time, uh, the head of uh, the creative, as I said, Dean DC, was trying to protect uh, Alexo and the rest of them who were playing that genre of music. And he felt, oh, I, I remember when I did... Um, I did a Luther Vandross. You know that song? Yeah. Oh, my love. A thousand kisses from you is never yeah, too much. Luther, Luther Vandross. I did my own version of it and I took it to him. I, he pulled off his glasses and kept on the table and looked at me and said, what the hell do you think you're doing? And I said, so what, sir? And he said, no, you can't play this kind of music. It, I didn't understand that because I was a bit naive. It was later on that things started falling in place, I said. But I remember walking into his office and saying, look, sir, can you just call up this contract? He said, why? I said, no, no, no. I don't want to do it anymore. I'll call it off. And he said, no, that what you're doing that wise is you, you, it's called suspension of contract. I said, I don't know what you want to call it, but hmm. I'm out of here. And then I left and um, I started appearing in Ripples. I went back to my first love. Because yeah, I remember Ripples. First, first and foremost, I'm an actor. And I got trained, and so I, I was class of 86, Ife. And I said, hey, 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 go back. And then I met with Zebe Jiro, started acting on Ripples, along with Barbara Soki. From there, we did Fortunes. We fortunes went to Mega Fortunes. And then, boom, Chico Jiro, may so rest in peace, that called me up. Because he, he was at the point in time directing fortune, uh, Fortunes. He said, I have a script, and I'd like you to shave your hair. Would you be interested in doing that? I said, yes, okay, well, fine. And so we did Silent Night where I played Black Arrow. And, uh, I, I, I don't want you to go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> because I was coming to that. And shockingly, uh, you will be sh- I, I don't know whether you, this will be shocking to you. Uh, we're having a conversation about you a few hours ago. And somebody said, I don't like that guy. I said, what's the problem? He said, the role he had. Mm. I said, how many movies have you watched? He said, I can't forget that Silent uh, Night. Night. 
that you were looking so fearful, so dreaded, that if he sees you in the physical, imagine it take you to be that particular person. I've, had this this, kind of I've, I've, got, I've got a lot of that kind of reaction, so I'm used to it. At the point in time, it was it was almost damaging my psyche, but I I I got over it. I got I I I was getting into depression at the point in time. I won't mm. lie to you. I was almost getting into depression because. By virtue of the fact that I played Silent Night and then everybody latched onto it and they started giving me those kind of roles. Stereotyping you. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the word. It was stereotyping me. I was becoming a typecast. And I said uh, to myself, no, this is not going to work because on the success of Silent Night, people liked it. Policemen would see me on the way. They would hail. They would say, oh, they love the movie. And people generally had different reactions. It was like an elephant. You know, the elephant had different Different, different, different fields, sides different, different sides of views. there's a rough side, the smooth side, the edgy part. So, you know, it, it, that's what it is. That you see, when the blind man touched you, or a blind man once thought the elephant said, So, you have a different perspectives of, 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 of life. So, um, the likes of Ramsey, uh, Jim Ike, uh, all of them, you know, started traveling abroad, they were being courted, they were being invited for things out of outside the country, mm -hmm. and then I wasn't invited. And it started playing on my on my mental health, and mm. I was feeling being left out. I, do this guy really think I'm a monster or something? I I just at the point I was really tell you the truth, guy that was falling into depression, which was gradually ebbing into it. But uh, I now decided I was going to do something. I took a two two week hiatus. Mm. Just took a two year hiatus off. I said I was going to be acting anymore, and then I was using voiceovers. To pay school fees, to do every other thing, mm. voiceovers came into the gap, and I was very happy. And then one day, um, Sherry Ramosella of, of Guinness then called me and said they wanted me to do an advert for them. And we're not to, before then. I'd even lost an advert with, with Gouda. They had done everything that was going to anchor the, the rebranding. And the guy called me and said on the morning of the, say my my bosses think you you don't fit the brand. I said, what do you mean I don't fit the brand? And so. I, those are part of the things that will really affect me. Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody? And I called my friend for that matter. I said, wow. Fred, go do it. Fred, go to do it. And then I was really bitter. And when that opportunity came for me to do Party On, it was a weekly uh, raffle draw program. There was fight again and within the Guinness caucus. Ah, no, is this, is that. The woman put her foot down. God bless her, whatever she is. Put her foot down. She wanted me to do this. Say, I'm putting my job on the line for this. Mm. And that was a big risk. Wow. I went. <clears throat> they took me to South Africa. I even helped to get the visas for, for some of the staff who went. Got there. I did the radio thing. I did the television thing. Before I got back into, into Lagos, the news I got to them, I was brilliantly done. Hmm. I did that. And for that whole season, for Party on Guinness, it went crazy. We are going crazy. Before it ended, they had given me a contract for the following year. Wow. And so that started changing the perception. Wow. And then Charles Novia now came and put the icing on the cake. He said uh, he had a role he wanted Jide Kosoko to play. And he didn't think that he would like Jide Kosoko to do it because he felt I could do it better. I'm an actor. I said, yeah, I'm an actor. Yes, granted, there are certain roles I might not be suitable. But I'm willing to take my, my chance. I took my chances. So he said, let's do it. And so we, a third, we did Atlanta with Grace Arma and Funke Akindele. And boom, everybody started looking at me from that perspective. perspective. What? Oh, oh, so you can be, and before I knew it, roles started coming, better, better roles started coming in, and I just relaxed. Okay, so I, I will talk about a bit about your voiceover uh, artist career, yeah. because that's another one that uh, a lot of people will never forget. Mm -hmm. uh, but still on this, probably a lesson for upcoming actors, even current days uh, actors, talking about um, being stereotyped. How should they handle it? Uh, you remember the story of patients of Zoko, how people think this is one man is a witch and, and, and people felt she can do any other thing. Is it a function of the director? Because in your case, I think you had to wait for someone I to give you a chance. No, I didn't have to wait for someone to give myself. Mm -hmm. I provided the chance. I told myself I was taking a break for it. Now, mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me tell you. Yeah, I was taking a break from it, sorry. Let me tell you what it is. I, the reaction that you talk about patients of Zoko, it did happen to me. I remember people see me. One woman saw me on Adel Rugu saying, like, what can't you get? Have you ever played a good role? I said, madam, it's just a job. He said, no, 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 no. You see, you get different, different reactions. I got somebody who in who hit me behind my back. Ah, what are you doing in this town? Blah, blah, blah. So you get wow. all sorts, you get all sorts of reactions. I've seen policemen stop 
an old policeman in Benin. He was with his people. They stopped the vehicle. And as he saw me, he said, now you be this. Hmm. He started praying for me. He was praying. My friends with me was praying. He didn't ask me for anything. He didn't say, come and ask me anything. He to, but this old man was praying, police officer. As we drove off, as my eyes welled, I started tears were just running from my head. There are people who still appreciate you for what you do. So, it's a perception of the public because they see you play this role over and over and over and over again. If you notice that, um, what was this movie that Jennifer Naji played, did, with Peter Doce, and if I can remember the title of this film, she did one recent film that Peter Doce was in it and Kemo was in it as well. If you notice, is recent? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. It came down mm -hmm. like, downright Nigeria to play. I'm trying to remember the title now. Lion Heart. Like I was saying, it, it does happen to people. Like Genevieve, for instance, took Nkemo in um, this movie called Lion Heart. Lion Heart, yeah. okay. And she she changed the perception of Nkemo. Normally, it would be a run-of-the-mill thing that it's stereotypism. But Nkemo did very well. He was wearing suit. He was different. You could, so you could see a different Nkemo. You didn't have... A lot of people would struggle, say, to try and balance him. But an actor is an actor. You also, as an actor, also have to try as much as possible to save yourself from that. Because when you're so good at it, most directors will, will have no option but to... Mm. So when they come up with those things, sometimes I ask them, what's in the script? I read it. Sometimes when they just call you, they just tell you, ah, we have a How much will you charge? How can I tell you how much I will ask? No, I ask without script, script. Script. I say, send me the script. I read it and say, no, I don't want to do it. I've turned down countless numbers of, okay. of scripts. I just said, no, I don't want to do it. So probably they, the they, lesson they, for them is they could turn down scripts. They could turn, down, you turn down the script. But in, in real life, when you meet patients, it's like, oh, 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 she's such a darling. She's a lovely darling, a great woman, and mother, grandmother. Same thing with, with, with Kemo, funny guy, free-minded. Most most of them free-minded, easygoing. Um, Alex C for same thing. So I don't I I don't like the idea of actors even pushing them, helping to push themselves into that cocoon. I I have to break out, That's break true. out of it. Okay, let's quickly talk a bit about your voice over. Um, uh, jobs, so to say, because almost like that's the only voice we hear those days. And uh, how has it been? Is it something you've dropped off, or what exactly is happening? Or has it taken some kind of uh, new dimension? How voiceover job is being done? Oh, yes, it's taken a new dimension entirely. But how we do voiceovers, and incidentally, I, I just emerged in June as the new president of the Association of Voice of Artists Nigeria. Interesting. After my work, my stint as president of uh, Actors Guild of Nigeria, I've seen a couple yes, of so good voiceover <laughs> guys who said they don't know how to become members. Oh, I'm going. I'm going. I'm, go I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to certainly <clears throat> sort that out very, very soon. Well, let's I'm, talk about you. First. Let's talk about this. First. <laughs> I'm going to sort that out. Uh, it's 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 been it's been ongoing. So, um, how did it happen? Not too far from here, to Fabalua Square here, I uh, was working with Tunde Ajuja Didu, where we, and alongside Kings Deogoro, we had Digitrack and um, Sonny Rabo jumped into the studio one day. I was looking for somebody to help him read a voice, and he couldn't find. And um, I was a PR on, and um, and he wasn't ready to do it himself. He didn't want to do it himself, so he wanted a different voice, and so he's. He looked at me and said, come and try this. I said, I've never done voice before. He said, oh, but you have a good voice. Let's try it. And he showed me the ropes and all that. And I I did it. You know, like you put goody goody in somebody's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. I tried it. It worked. And I went, wow. And then, this was 1988, 89. And the next thing, he just gave me, how much did he give him? Like, like, 2,500 which is big money. I look at Two thousand five hundred for reading voice. Just talking. For just talking. <laughs> this is a good business. <laughs> and so moving on, it just started the, the script started trickling in. So I was sing for the jingle. I was do the voice outside by salary. And Tunde was like, Okay, that's nice. <laughs> you know, like there was one time we were even stuck in the office. We we're stuck, we couldn't pay salaries. I say, What's the problem? So I'm say, I'm coming. I went to F uh, Federal Savings Bank then, just at the corner. I went to withdraw and they gave him. I say, When you get money, give back my money. So it was my money that we used to pay salaries. For, awesome. for, for that. So you, you, and I just saw a different thing entirely. And then to now make it stronger for me, CNN just started. And this actor, big actor, you know him, James L. Jones, hmm. now did the voice. 
And when I heard that, it made me go crazy. And I heard, this is CNN. I said, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I went, hey, why? I said, this is how I won. And there were quite a lot of people who had voices there. Manio Numonio, Saze Yamu. Uh, there was one Ike Imokwe there. Oh, Ike voice Jesus. You same Ike? Same Ike, yeah. We used uh. to wear glasses. Ike Mo. He did a voiceover for us for peak restaurants at peak nightclub. I, I said, oh, God. <laughs> I said, okay, we're going to work on resonance. That's the working on diction, pronunciation, resonant breath control, and keeping your baritone going and all that. And so I started work, and I, I didn't relent. I didn't relent, and I gave it my all. I gave it my best shot. And, you know, years later, many, many years, this was about two, three years ago, just the same way we were sitting across Sonny Rabo interviewed me and we talked about doing voiceovers. Oh, and, and, oh, and I said, and I said, you so started this. Just for a record, uh, what was your biggest, uh, you know, gig in terms of uh, deals? If you could talk about it, even if you don't want to talk about the figure. The biggest, for me, the biggest voiceover I, de- I did was when um, the late President uh, Yaradwa in his campaign, I was the official voice. Wow. And the PDP came to grab me. And they were flying me up and down. I was feeling dizzy. <laughs> but they brought in some white guys to come for the campaign. Jonathan was his deputy then, was vice. And they flew me. Where are you? I mean, Lagos. Okay, bring you on to the plane. Sometimes they will fly down to me. And so they were, they were lounging. And I got the fattest pay ever for voiceover. And I awesome. said, oh, life is good. <laughs> okay, let's talk a bit about your pri- private life. And uh, um, quite a lot of people who probably have been following you would say, Oh, what happened to your first marriage? Um, we thought, oh, these are two actors who are doing very well. But what exactly happened? And trust me, there are always rooms for all kinds of. Probably Talk. there was not there was no fake news then, mm. as it's being popular now. No, no, but there was still, no, 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 but still got fake news. news. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fake news. <laughs> but still fake news. I mean, well, um, I think what happened um, to put it in a mild form was that we're not. We're both not matured and ready for what happened. And uh, if we knew what we knew, then I don't think that would have happened. But um, I'd like to, as much as possible, respect her privacy, respect her That's person. True. She's a fantastic actress, great mother. And I'd like to leave it at that. Well, we still talk once in a while. Hello, how are you? In fact, she woke me up this morning with a call. Awesome. <laughs> about, because she's a member of Avoa. Awesome. And we just talked briefly. And... Um, that's it. Um, I, I wouldn't disrespect her. What happened was bound to happen. It happened. And so we just let it go. We just let it slide and yeah, let it go. I, but I, I will, what the most important thing is, what are the things we take? What are our takeaways from it? I've, learned. I, I've moved on. This uh, I'm going to my 14th year in my marriage now. Hmm. I have three lovely kids. And so. Awesome. Let's quickly talk few, for the last few minutes I have with you. Uh, let's talk a bit about something that was also in the news then. Um, the Aegean crisis and mm. uh, people would say that it got so bad it has never been that bad mm. uh, I'm trying to remember the the leadership of Aegean with Emeka Ek, that it got so bad that uh, there was all kinds of words that were being used in the uh, in the media then so mm. uh, are you guys together now are you friends or it was just a well, thing we will always, then we'll, we'll, really we'll always be friends and colleagues but it depends on the level of friendship but we'll, we'll see hello how are you we banter we joke. Um, I remember in the, in the heat of the pandemic, he called me. He was in Germany. He called me, and we talked for like an hour or so. We we talk. Um, those are things that they are bound to happen. Even in politics, it's bound to happen that you find. It. I think what happened was my coming in into into AGN sort of created a lot of awareness. Um, so people begin to look. Oh, for Shegu to go for presidency of AGN means there's something in there and all that. Well, there was nothing in there. <laughs> the only thing there was just the prestige of being president and trying to administer. But when they do, did our work, because I remember um, as soon as the dust was settling down, the first thing I did was to try and twine Actors Guild with the Screen Actors Guild, took them to the Federation of International Actors, worked on the British uh, equity twining, and we did quite a, a lot of things. We did a lot of trainings and all that, worked with NANTAP and all that. Um, but what happened in that period, the controversy itself uh, was was how do I put it now it, it, it was something people did out of selfish their own selfish they were not thinking about the guild I was thinking more about the guild and, but we thank God for giving wisdom and because wisdom is profitable to direct so we, we, 
we had to find a way around it. Um, funnily enough, you were there too, so you knew what happened. So you saw, <laughs> so you saw what happened. You were one of those protecting me and guiding me <laughs> as at that time. It was crazy. It was a crazy one of the craziest periods. Um, but I didn't, let, I didn't let it deter me. That, in fact, that was the turning point in my life that made me very tough and strong. Because I said, listen, the the lowest you can go is down. Mm. You can't go down. You can't go downer than down. <laughs> Let me use that word. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. After that, every other thing started and up. up and by the way, I would like to use this point uh, to commiserate to the family of Ifai, Prince Ifai Dike, who just passed on, and say so, um, he's done his bit. He worked so hard as a beauty chairman. He worked as an actor. He worked uh, as a patron. He he. he he did so much, even starting the Actors Guild of Nigeria. Actors Guild of Nigeria would not have been now coming to existence without his his, his um, knowledge, without his wisdom, without uh, okay. everything that he planned. So I, we all pray that uh, God grants him rest. That was uh, a very moody one to end this conversation. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Shegu and Rize. Uh, one we call Black Arrow. <laughs> it's been a wonderful time. Thank you so and, much. And uh, we'll have another solid guest like Shegu and Rize in the next edition of Jollof Agenda. I am Kade Ladeinde. Bye. <laughs>